Hello uh, RGL2100 students, Dr. Conway here. Um, as I promised, I will be sending you some lecture videos so we don't fall behind due to COVID-19. Because this course is a hybrid course, I'm able to offer you an hour and a half, ostensibly, according to college rules, offer you an hour and a half of work, and that's what this lecture will be. I encourage you not to fall behind on, on our, our lectures as we go forward. So let's try to, uh, to maintain uh, the same pace we would normally maintain. I've sent you an email about a Zoom meeting, uh, which would be occurring at a, for about an hour at our usually cl usual class times. Um, so we'll keep that up probably throughout the rest of the term so that we can have our Q's and A's with respect to your, your research papers or any other issues that may arise as we go along. I will be doing that, plus uh, probably sending you these videos on our lectures so we maintain that uh, pace through these videos and we maintain our interaction through the Zoom meetings. I don't want to do presentations during the Zoom meetings because that gets a little bit complicated. Okay. Now as we go along, uh, I'll also send out some instructions that the college sent to me about how to access and, and use Zoom. All right. So today. <clears throat> we're going to be carrying on with our next uh, uh, lecture, which is uh, Lesson 10 on Enforcement. You recall last week we dealt with the issue of compliance promotion, and so this week we'll deal with the issue of enforcement. Okay. Now, before I get too far into that, everything else will proceed as normal. Uh, continue with your discussion boards. I will be sending out quizzes if you... If you uh, uh, you use the quiz for self-assessment um, then you will get points for for attending uh, the quiz uh, but you'll also uh, you know be I'll also be looking for you to participate in the zoom calls and that's the way I can monitor whether I'm losing any students during this period or not in terms of their focused work okay so I want to monitor that to make sure that everybody's on board and we're all accomplishing what we need to accomplish as we go forward. I'll be getting to discussion board marking, things like that as soon as I can, as you can well imagine. Uh, this has been an extremely hectic week so far for faculty as we adjust to uh, uh, the new reality uh, for all of our courses, not just your course. Um, now, um, <clears throat> keep in mind that if there are any problems, you can send me an email directly and I'll try to resolve the problems as best I can. Uh, but keep working on your papers, keep moving through, um, and then uh, next week we'll do the full, the full, we'll have a, a lecture video, we'll have the Zoom call, you should be doing your discussion boards, you should be working on your paper, everything. So nothing much needs to change the way I have it set up, except for that we're not meeting in class, we'll be meeting over online until, until further notice, which frankly looks like the rest of the term because the um, uh, it, it, health officials are basically saying about a month before the COVID-19 curve flattens out. That puts us into exam time in any case. Um, but that doesn't matter. We're going to press on uh, in the format that I'm talking about and we'll get it all done. Just stay focused, keep chipping away and, and everything should be everything should be fine. Okay, so let's let's just look on the bright side. We have work to do. Let's just get it done. Let's just press on, and then we'll see what the the summer term brings. When it when it comes, it comes. We'll figure it out at that point. All right. So, let's deal with uh, the question of our lecture for today. All right. Our lecture uh, lecture for today is on enforcement. As I said, uh, last week we uh, addressed uh, uh, compliance promotion, and I was telling you that. Compliance promotion is a vitally important aspect of, of regulation. And for regulation to be successful, you need to have very high levels of, of compliance, uh, voluntary compliance, obviously. But of course, no regulatory regime is going to last for very long if uh, everybody realizes that, that enforcement is not real. Obviously, enforcement is necessary to maintain discipline upon, around the regulatory objectives. Okay, so let's let's look at this question of enforcement. Enforcement can be defined as the act of compelling adherence to legal obligations by employment of penalties. If compliance promotion is effective, regulatory enforcement, as I said last week, 
uh, doesn't need to occur all that often, but when it does occur, uh, governments typically want it to be a, a fairly loud statement on the, the penalties of not being in compliance with regulatory requirements. Regulatory enforcement, depending on the nature of the regulation, relies on regulatory scrutiny, including inspections on a random and responsive basis of facilities or of uh, water emissions from the plant or air emissions from the plant, whatever the case may be, gathering samples for testing, food, water, quality, etc., organizing and assessing reporting data required under regulations. Most regulations uh, will require some kind of reporting from the, from the regulated parties, either annually, quarterly, twice a year, whatever the case may be, depending upon the, the potential severity of the hazard and the risk. Okay, Taking actions uh, based on credible third-party information. I described to you that third-party observation is an important factor in regulatory compliance, promotion, and enforcement. Uh, citizen groups out there like the water keepers and others you know, do report on these things. And, uh, and so that becomes an important way of, of monitoring regulatory performance in addition to what the government does to, to do uh, uh, random and responsive uh, checks on, on regulatory compliance. Now, enforcement is, is obviously an expensive activity. That's why we want to do the, the least amount of it we have to do and prefer high levels of voluntary compliance because enforcement is expensive. And because enforcement is expensive, you need to have enforcement plans that set out strategic ways that the government is going to go about confer, confer, conforming or, sorry, confirming the, uh, the behavior of regulated parties. But that's expensive, sending out inspectors for sampling, checking sites, things like that. So you have to do it strategically. So obviously the government develops strategic frameworks for how it's going to devise its enforcement plan. Obviously targeting uh, uh, the highest risk areas more often, maybe targeting more often uh, industries that maybe have not been in compliance or been consistently uh, coming in and out of compliance. There are a bunch of strategic considerations that you do to devise a, a strategic and tactical plan for how you're going to do your enforcement because obviously under conditions of scarcity and opportunity cost, there's only so much money to go around for enforcement activities. So these, these enforcement plans reflect enforcement priorities, historical problems, differential uh, groups in the regulated community, and regional variability among other factors. There's a number of strategic and tactical factors that a regulatory agency would want to take into account when it devises its plan. It can't go out and check everybody all the time. So it has to be strategic about it, very much like law enforcement, right? Where law enforcement will, will uh, have more patrols in certain areas than in other areas, depending upon risk factors, okay? Uh, when regulatory viola violations warrant, enforcement officials in most governments typically undertake detailed investigations. So there's only so many of those you can handle as well. So you better prioritize them on things that are most, uh, most vital in terms of controlling harm. Uh, these investigations are typically done according to enforcement uh, procedures that should be set out clearly in enforcement by for enforcement officials. And we talked about that last week. Compliance Promotion and Enforcement Policy of SEPA. If you haven't already done so, download it. Take a look. See what they say about compliance promotion. What rights does the regulated party have for support and, and information? But what happens when they don't comply is also in there in terms of the steps and the procedures that will be followed for enforcement of the regulation. And of course, enforcement officials are heavily trained. I mean, we, we, our program is not an enforcement program. There are separate programs that are geared specifically for enforcement activities, which is quasi-law enforcement. Um, whereas our regulatory course is quasi-law, these are law enforcement type training programs. Uh, enforcement actions tend to move through steps that give the regulated party opportunities to come into compliance, as I described last week. If we can uh, issue a warning but then sit down with the industry to bring them into compliance, that's always going to be preferable. If the industry is cooperative and, and is making an honest effort, the government will always prefer that, bringing the industry into compliance rather than going into an enforcement conflict that will lead to expenses and risks. Okay. 
both for the industry and for uh, for the government, but also for the workers of that industry. And the government obviously does not want a situation where it has to start shutting down plants. I mean, it, if it has to, it will, but it prefers, obviously, for obvious reasons, prefers not. But once the enforcement action is started, there needs to be a clear resolution according to enforcement rules of procedure and that this outcome is publicly known. In other words, if you are subject to an enforcement action, your name is out there and the results of that enforcement action must be posted publicly. Okay. Now, enforcement generally includes the following types of st steps. First, a, a verbal and written warning, verbal and or written warning. Okay. Administrative directives or orders. If, for example, uh, you've been warned, now uh, this is what we expect for you to come into compliance. Administratively imposed monetary penalties if after the warning and after an effort to bring it into compliance, you, uh, we're still seeing non-compliance, then there needs to be monetary penalties. Increased regulatory burden can also be imposed after the case or even during the regulatory action. For example, if an industry was supposed to report once a year or twice a year, suddenly the government says, "Look, given your record, we want you to we want you to report every quarter, okay, on what's going on." Then there can be injunctions which can shut down plants, okay, for periods of time. Court injunctions that say, "Subject to breaking these rules, you must cease operations for such and such a time until you resolve the matter with government." Okay, licensing sanctions. This can be complete removal of your license to operate. Uh, that begins obviously gets quite severe once once the government says, "Look, I mean, this is ridiculous. We're just going to not only uh, you know shut you down for now, but we're going to withdraw your license. If you ever want to operate again, you have to reapply for a license or a registration or whatever the case may be." Um, civil suits by the crown to recover costs, like what was just happening with uh, Volkswagen in Canada. And then finally, criminal prosecutions and the potential for, for jail time. Uh, but obviously, that's a lot of steps. I mean, and you have to be pretty thick to, to allow it to get all the way to criminal prosecutions when the government allows you this many steps uh, to come into compliance. Now, there are cases, however, where criminal prosecutions do occur because of various circumstances. Okay, so these are the steps that we go through. Uh, now, most, most agencies will have separate policy units and regulatory development uh, units and implementation units and their enforcement unit, the way Environment Canada does, for example. The enforcement officials at Environment Canada, you know, they're, they're the, they, they actually appear in uniforms, they'll go out and do inspections, they'll enforce actions as need be, and they're, they're a separate, typically they're a separate unit within, within these agencies. These units will typically provide overall functional directions for investigations, inspection, and other enforcement actions, develop and monitor an annual inspection plan, and develop enforcement training courses. And this is ongoing, and, and, and the training is, is quite strenuous because, you know, when you're doing enforcement actions, as we learned about the rules of general application, you recall our, our lecture on the law, we identified rules of general application and we noted that one of those was criminal law, which means due process under criminal law, which means that evidence must be collected and saved and recorded in certain ways and all the procedures that go into any type of investigation also apply to enforcement officers uh, that deal with environment, health, food security issues, whatever the case may be. The delivering training programs, many of them are offered at Algonquin College, actually, but, but in a special program just for people who are already working in enforcement. But uh, the, the training programs can, are, you know, are, are ongoing because the law is constantly changing, requirements change. Okay? And, of course, these, these units need to maintain quite significant uh, data management systems. Uh, when, when was something inspected? What did we find? Is there a need for further inspections? How often? The data tracking is very, very important in regulation, in particular because, because regulatory officials may appear before the courts in a prosecutorial uh, situation. You have to, you have to really uh, maintain your data just like any, any law enforcement agency has to. Uh, detailed records, detailed cataloging, all of those factors come into play uh, with enforcement action. Okay, now 
as you can see, we the government spend quite a bit of money on the enforcement of their regulations, but obviously we they you know these these enforcement operations are expensive. They're costly. Uh, and so uh, voluntary compliance is obviously massively preferred. And so the regulatory system goes through quite an elaborate process to maintain public legitimacy of regulatory systems. But one of the ways we maintain legitimacy of regulatory systems is that people need to be aware that if you transgress the regulation repeatedly, there will be enforcement action. And when there is that enforcement action, it can be quite difficult because the government doesn't like going through enforcement actions, but when it has to, it will set an example. Okay, so that's the that's and why do they set an example? Obviously, because they want as high a level of voluntary compliance as possible, and sometimes that requires an example be set. All right. So this was a short lecture, uh, but it's an important lecture. Uh, you need to. Download that uh, Compliance Promotion and Enforcement Policy of SEPA. Take a look around it. You don't have to read it for hours. Take a look around it. Find out what's there. Understand how my lectures are relating for what they're say to what they're saying in the uh, Compliance Promotion and Enforcement Policy. All right? So on that note, look, I'll see everybody uh, in our Zoom meeting on uh, next Wednesday at our usual class time for about an hour. Uh, come prepared to that meeting to ask me any questions, problems related to your paper. We'll go over other issues. I'll take any questions about, uh, about any of the lectures and how we're proceeding and so on. And I'll probably in that meeting also try to set our final exam date, which will occur over a two-day period, uh, open book, very much like the midterm. Okay? We'll just we'll schedule it uh, hopefully in next week's Zoom meeting because... Already we're, we're starting to get pretty close to the end of the term and I want to give all the students, given all this disruption, all the students uh, quite a bit of heads up on when things are going to happen and how they're going to happen. Okay? On that note, just follow the instructions of the college executive, follow public health directives from the government, chip away at your work. Let's not get into a situation where we're piling up at the end of the term, uh, causing a lot more stress than we need to. Let's just chip away, keep going just like we were normally going to keep going. Uh, the course, it's very likely that the rest of the, the course will be online. We have our tools. I'm sending videos. We're doing Zoom calls. You carry on with all the other work as planned. Should not be any reason that we, we need to be in any kind of panic or major disruptive, or, or encounter any major disruptions. All right? So let's press on. Talk to you next week. Have a good weekend. Go out for a walk, but don't huddle with too many people, right? Follow the directives. Smile and be happy. Take it easy. Bye-bye.